All right, I'm going to try recording it this time because ISPs apparently are sin free and give you the best service ever and they make you pay $300 a month. <sighs> Let's try this for a third time today. In this mode, unusually shaped blocks will appear in the puzzles. Recommended for those looking for a fresh experience. So Catherine Fullbody is the sequel, requel, remake thing that Atlas unveiled in September of 2019 for America and September or in February 2019 for Japan. It has basically all the same levels as the original, except it also has a new mode, which allows you to play with these fancy little Tetris looking blocks over here. The ones that are gold and purple there, they introduce those particular blocks introduce a lot into the uh, story mode or the puzzles because they're so funkily shaped and they have a couple of their own mechanics, which make the game a little bit weird. So, we're also going for a Rin ending, a good or true Rin ending, which means we have to play through stage 10, which is Close Encounter, and that is a brand new stage for this game alone. Without any further ado, we shall start in 3, 2, 1. Very well. Please enjoy the world of Catherine Fullbody to the fullest. All right. So let's try this again. Thankfully, Atlas and Studio Zero are generous gods and they allow us to skip cutscenes. I know a lot of games like, uh, I don't know, Life is Strange or uh, Final Fantasy, you don't get to skip the cutscenes, you gotta sit through them. So that's Vincent, that's the level below we're gonna be guiding through for the next getting through these puzzles for the next uh, hour, 40-ish minutes, so give or take a few. He's got sheep horns because uh, the lore of this is that you're in a nightmare and you see everybody else's sheep, but you see yourself as a person but with horns. So this is the underground cemetery. It's just got some basic blocks here. Uh, these white ones are the most basic of basic blocks. These are the remix blocks we were talking about earlier funky looking shapes that can come in simple as a uh, little 2x1 there, or a 3x2, two two, but missing one and in a single corner. And then it can be funky things like that uh, purple one we were messing with earlier. We also got little T-blocks, right? Just, they're straight out of Tetris, kind of. Especially right here, there are two of them right back to back. Uh, this gold I'm picking up uh, affects our score, and the score is what you use to buy stuff in the shops between stages. But we will we'll be buying a couple of items in this difficulty, unlike easy, which we don't buy any. And that was stage one. We have escaped perfectly. So that's the little taunting voice that we're going to be hearing at the end of each stage and the beginning. Also, if you're fast enough, that was Catherine. That was our girlfriend. She spelled she spells her name with a K. And that was Paul. He's dead. He uh, Paul was in the same nightmare that we were in. Not the exact same because we didn't see him. But uh, he had the same nightmare and he died in the nightmare. So he dies in real life. This is Erica. She's the bartender. Uh, she went to school with Vincent. So, they're just friends. That's Rin. That's the new Catherine. Spell the Q. We'll later find out, but... Yeah, they're going with the Q meme for that one. You got a mail. <clears throat> we also had to deal with a texting tutorial because the first game didn't do so. Apparently, they think it's important to know how to text your girlfriend. Do not text your girlfriend like this. You will get slapped. <sighs> but Vince is worrying about how Catherine wants to get married and all this stuff. She wants to bring her parents over and meet Vincent for the upteenth time. Oh yeah, don't say that. Really don't say that text if you want to get slapped. Uh, 
Also, that photo was of oh. Catherine in her uh, cheerleading outfit when she was in high school, but she was only filling in for somebody. She wasn't actually part of the cheerleading team. So in that cutscene, we get to meet the title Catherine, spelled with a C. Uh, she's blonde, she wears white lingerie everywhere she goes, basically white lingerie-ish like dresses. And she's also like 10 years younger than Vincent. Uh, those sheep that are walking with us are, lore-wise, people that are also encountering the same nightmare as us. Uh, Gameplay-wise, they are people who have played the stage. So the names are basically randomly generated from people who've played the stage recently. Alright, so the Prison of Despair introduces these crack blocks, which are the ones that we're occasionally stepping on the, that Gold's on. Uh, they, you can step on them twice, and then they just break forever. So it's a, more of a you-better-not-mess-up block. And this little pillow up here gives us an extra undo. Hopefully we won't have to use very many of those undos. Uh, in the original game, they gave you an extra retry but they did away with the lives and retries in this game and just made it so everybody has infinite lives and you just have a limited number of undoes. So I had to move that block because it was actually going to be supported by the gold block up at the top. And since it was going to be connected at an edge, uh, it would just hover in the air, no matter how big it is, even though it wouldn't make sense because of weight and such, but... So these are the landings. You uh, you can get to talk to these sheep if you want, but we don't have to because they don't say anything interesting or give us anything interesting. So these confessional questions that we're answering, we don't have to pay attention to a lot of them. We do have to pay attention to at least ten of them. Uh, there are four that we had to pay attention to in order to ha make Vince have a midlife crisis about liking Rin. We then have to answer six questions after or three questions during that midlife crisis, and then six questions after that midlife crisis in order to get a good or true Rin ending. But you'll know which one's a Rin question because the meter does something a little bit different. Alright, so we're gonna move on up. So this little block right here is a 3x3. Three three. It creates a 3x3 three three platform underneath you. Which, in the original game, it created a single white block in front of you. So it's kind of, it's been changed from the original game. about to see it again. We're about to go into the uh, first boss of the game, which is going to be named the Fist of Grudge. And they're just a big pair of arms that hold a fork, and they want to stab us. I'm currently looking at my kilobits per second, and my stream has died. Luckily, I am luckily recording this, so we shouldn't have an issue with that. So these are the Fist of Grudge. 
edge have appeared. It's the killer. Do not die. Their special power is that they turn blocks into heavy blocks, which I believe we haven't seen yet. And heavy blocks take about three times as long to move as these white crock blocks. So we're just going to head on up here. Yeah, this boss isn't doing a very good job of uh, slowing us down, are they? So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a skip that still exists from the original game. So we're going to go up here and we're going to just push the tower away. Since nothing's connecting in an edge, it's falling down. Oh, we get to see the top of their head. Got some dandruff up there, don't they? So all that level that we just pushed away, we actually cut it down from about uh, just about a hundred steps. That level's about a hundred steps long, and now we cut it down to about seventy. And the 30 that we did cut out, it's a really awkward song. So that was Catherine. You could s got to see her a little bit. Also, Kappa Heaven. So that was flashing back to the cutscene when uh, Rin and Vincent met each other. Which was on not not the best circumstances because Rin kind of ran into Vince and sat on his face. Bless Erica, she cares about us when we leave. So Vince doesn't have enough to drink when he's at the bar, so he goes home, drinks some more. So now we're going on to uh, the torture chamber. They introduce the spike blocks, or the trap blocks as the game likes to call them. Uh, you can only stand on them for about a third of a second and then they kind of impale you. So it's best to just run off of them. out of the way. Actually, I'm gonna grab this for once. Yeah, I guess I'll just use that there. So we don't have to worry about him. We're gonna lose a little bit of time compared to everything I've done so far. It's no big deal. I got time to save one. Go on up. 
So that move that I'm doing when I'm hanging in front of a block is called sidling. Uh, whenever you hang off a block and there's no block directly beneath it for a staircase or so, you hang off the side. Alright, so now we're going into Torch Chamber 2. Uh, what happened in that last cutscene is that Rin is actually trying to save us with piano playing. Because the piano is magical. And the song is magical and all this good stuff. So now Brynn has the need to talk to us about one last tutorial message. Other than that, we're basically free to do whatever we want in the game now. Uh, there shouldn't be a tutorial that messes with us anymore. So these sheep are uh, kind of hell-bent on hitting you, so that guy just kind of stands there and takes the spike. Pull that block so that she doesn't bother us, and then we use this Bible to uh, smite the enemies with righteous lightning. So we're at the end here. We kind of need to juggle moving these blocks. And there we are. We're at the end. So that was the first Rin question. Uh, we had to answer three more of those in order to have a chance at getting into a Rin ending. And this is now the second boss of the game. Uh, just for a reference, it is a giant butt with a tongue and legs and arms. Or leg arms, I guess. And that's their attack. They fire little hearts at you, and if you get hit by the hearts, you get confused. And your controls are reversed. Luckily, we're being able to been able to uh, dodge them so far, but that one's going to be a really awkward spot to try to dodge. So we're going to use Vince's own power of Undo. Uh, undo is a very, very broken mechanic. Whenever we have to do, whenever we do have to use it. Okay, so we got confused there, so that means that our controls are reversed. And I kind of have to wait just a little bit. I'm going to undo that so I can not be confused for this last part. Yeah, undo is a very, very broken skill that Vince has. You wouldn't think he has it, but... A very broken scalp. Oh, 
So now these cutscenes are just kind of going back through Vincent's past and trying to show how much character he actually has instead of just being a kind of a uh, pushover. So he was wearing sunglasses. He was trying to hide from Sea Catherine because she's kind of stalking him. So now we're just going to head on home. What do you mean I don't look good, Erica? I look fine. I'm just tired. So this is Inquisition. We are not going to climb this tower because it is obnoxious and long. Those are my favorite sheep just because I say not like this. Yeah, we would have to climb that, and that's obnoxious. We're, we're, we're not going to do that. So instead, we're going to abuse a bit of the game to spawn the next piece, and then we're just going to say yoink, and not let it fall properly. And then we're going to push some more away so we have some stable ground. We're going to push a little bit more away. It's absolutely fine. This is all calculated. This is all fine. So we're going to use this little blue block. We're going to go to the end of the red. We're going to take this white block. Move over here. Pull this green. The white block's going to fall, so we have a step to go up. And since there is no edge for us to climb in the middle of that purple block, we are going to use this white one to get across the middle. So we have 5,000 points, which is enough for us to buy a 3x3 three three cube. This is the shopkeep. He uh, likes money. This is why he's a shopkeep. It's a, it's, very, it's a very nice hobby. He likes money. He, he sells stuff for money. This is the second written question. So now we're two for two. We're halfway there. So now this is yes, thanks, game. This is the child. It is a literal child. And uh, those with a uh, daddy fetish, please uh, raise your hands now. So that attack is basically kind of like an earthquake. Uh, it'll send you down to the next ledge you are able to stand on. It's not very fun. So 
now we're just gonna go on up. Grab this checkpoint for safety. Uh, there are points in this stage where the child gets so far behind, he's actually going to be invisible, like what he is now. He, Junior has gotten a new power that Vince does not have, and we are now scared. I don't know where he learned it from, I guess it was his mother. Oh, that was going to hit my dad. Ooh, that was close. So now we're at the top, we just have to pull a few more blocks. And other than that, we are good to go for the fourth stage. So we've made it this far. Skipping through some more stages. That cutscene where Vince was trying to get out of bed, uh, his girlfriend was at the door while his uh, other not girlfriend, Catherine, is in his bed. So he's kind of freaked out at that moment. And our friends kind of just leave us because they gotta go to work in the morning, and uh, work sucks. So now we're going to go to the quadrangle. Uh, what game isn't complete without a nice level? And that's exactly what this is. Uh, ice blocks, you will slide on an ice block until you hit something that isn't an ice block. And so will blocks as well. They will slide until they are no longer on top of an ice block, or they hit an edge. Except for the remix blocks for some reason. I'm not sure why, but it's kind of just a bug or something. I really hope it's a bug, because that's a dumb feature. Grab that. Push this out, push that. Push that. continue sliding until something is in your way, or you do not encounter an ice block, or you just fall to the edge. And now there's a sheep up here. Use a little trick to uh, get rid of that, hit him, and now he can't bother us anymore. gonna run around that sheep because he's pretty annoying sidle around here to the end and there we go Yeah, all these levels are fairly consistent. Uh, once you start losing time, you'll just... Unless you lose more time, you're going to be pretty consistent. So now we're going to go back to the shopkeeper. We're going to buy another item. We're going to buy a bell, which we haven't used the bell yet. 
and it says it changes surrounding blocks to the normal white block. Which this game actually gives it a really big nerf. The uh, radius used to be gigantic on it in the original game, and now it's it's only a lot, like five layers up and five layers down. It's kind of pathetic, honestly. So we're going to go on up here. There's a sheep here. I really don't like him. He's... Oh, I don't like pulling that block with him around there. It's really sketchy and I don't like it. I like those sheep. I like those sheep a lot. Just in case I mess this up, I'm going to grab the checkpoint, because you never know. So we're going to do a really weird solve that not a lot of people would do in their casual playthrough. Solve. We're going to use the bell here. We're going to push this out. Push this out. And push this out. Pull this. Oops. Push this out. And pull this in. And now we just wait for the rest of the stage to fall. We're going to pull the block back so it doesn't connect because it's trying to spawn on the farthest edge backward it can, which we're not letting it. So it'll just fall past us and continuously spawn pieces of the level. So this is Rin's power that we never really got to see. Uh, Rin can slow down the falling of the stage beneath us. There we go. That's really obnoxious to time. Um, so Rin pauses or slows down the falling of the stage below us and it's really helpful if you're new to the game and you're kind of stuck towards the bottom but we hardly ever experience that when you're doing the speed run it's really only helpful for stuff like that so now we're going to buy an energy drink we haven't used one of those yet So that was the third written question. You can see there's kind of a pattern. It starts, it, they ask us a question right before a boss. But uh, also, the drink has been severely nerfed from what it was in the beginning in Catherine Classic. Instead of having 10 seconds to climb as many two high towers as you wanted, you only have three opportunities to now. This is what that times three is for. So, guess what? We're going to make the stage fall again, but this time with a boss. But at least this time we get to listen to music. Uh, bless her heart, she's going to try her best. She's really mad, though. As long as you move up one block, you're fine. And we're just going to juggle her on the same block, because we can. Alright, so now that that piece is actually connected, the next piece is going to spawn a little bit farther away. And it's going to just fall, so we don't have to worry about it. And the next piece is going to do the same. And now we need to start paying attention to when the block the ending is, because it's going to be fairly soon. We're just going to go ahead and start climbing up. There we go. And that is uh, Doom's Bride, by the way. Oh, 
quadrangle's not too bad once you get used to it. Just kind of have to remember that ice is very, very dangerous. <laughs> Now we're gonna go back home. Uh, thanks to that mysterious voice telling us what stage this is. This is the clock tower. It introduces two blocks, but they're kind of just the same. It just has like, a subset of a block. Uh, they are bomb blocks. Uh, the basic bomb block will blow up in a radius of 3x3 three by 3. By three. Uh, the bigger ones, which you will not see until the next stage, explode in a radius of 5x5x5. Five by five by five. Uh, blocks that they blow up will either turn into a crack block, if they are not a crack block, or a dark block. If they are a dark block or an immobile block, they just don't do anything. Is that right there? Which I needed to be up one more because of wonderful radii. But it's not that big a deal. Um, so, second type of bomb block we're not going to encounter until the next stage. And the gimmick with these levels is that they're just kind of really weird looking stages, honestly. Especially the uh, third one in this stage, it's got a really weird pattern that it expects you to climb about 12 times before you, you get the picture. So we're just going to keep on going up. And that's the first one. So we're going to buy a drink here. Tonight's product is... So this is Clock Tower 2. And this is where we'll be introduced to the second type of bomb block. It's the one that's glowing a little bit brighter, or a lot brighter. It's flashing. And now we're going to be introduced to spring blocks. Spring blocks shoot you up five blocks by like just a little bouncy trampoline. And it's really worth it if you have to go up four or five blocks, but anything less than about four, it's not really worth it half the time. This is the 
last one charge there. We're gonna use another charge up here pretty soon. I had to wait for that just so it wouldn't make the stage fall really weird. Push that out because it's not really necessary and it's more of a pain to deal with. And we're going to use the last strength right here. We're going to go back to the shopkeep and we're going to buy another drink because uh, these patterns are not fun to solve and they are really slow to solve. The others seem to trust you and that piano player. Like I mentioned, these patterns are not fun to solve, and they are just diamonds. That's all they are. What you would have to do is you have to push one of the internal blocks all the way to the other side, and that just takes a lot of time. These are ants. These are not sheep that we are fighting now. Uh, the reason why they are ants will be revealed in the next cutscene that we're not going to watch, but... What basically happened in the last time when uh, Catherine, our girlfriend, came over while Catherine, the person we're cheating with, was in our bed, uh, our girlfriend gave us a piece of cake, and now the ants are starting to get at the cake. Use one there. Find the rest of this. This is about the old second one will only solve. And we actually have to do an undo abuse here because these fuses are really short and undoing resets the fuse on the bombs. I also have to let this ant get on top of me so I can smack them away. That's also a new addition to uh, full body, uh, smacking them when they're on top of you on a block because what they would do before is that they would just stand on top of you and never let you move. So it was more of a quality of life feature for that, really. So you wouldn't have to reset just because a sheep or something decided to stop on top of you and couldn't let you move. We are going to go to the shopkeeper one more time and we're going to buy another drink because we are thirsty. I think you're starting to get careless. That is the fourth ring question. We are locked into possibly getting it. We can make safety saves if we do mess up, but. Honestly, if you mess up, it's kind of a dead run. But in a marathon setting, a safety save would be great. So, this does a really good job with uh, not repeating bosses, but this is the one they kind of had to reuse, I guess. Uh, it's the child again, but this time he has a chainsaw that I guess Vince let him play with or something. He's also half robot because he's seen some shit. Right, So 
So his power is that he uh, spawns stuff that we really don't want to do with. So I'm going to undo so we don't have to do with it. Because undo is OP. Normally you would... I ideally, he would do it in a spot that isn't an immediate danger to Vince. But... Since he kind of does sometimes, we I figured that it's just easier to undo instead of having to deal with it. I pull that so we can undo there. Right, we're gonna push that, push this, push that. Get up here. That. Oops. Whoops. There we go. Undo is very powerful, but when you fat finger stuff, it's not. It doesn't save a lot of time when you fat finger stuff. At this point, we should just be able to finish the stage normally. Normally. Those are the buzz saws that he sends out. Uh, they are not fun if you run into them. <laughs> so now we're in our little mental breakdown. Uh, what happens is that Vince hears something in Rin's apartment because they're neighbors. And he goes over to check on Rin, and it turns out, uh, the, the spoiler alert and plot twist, Rin is a guy. And the kind of odd thing is, is that Erica took Rin to the doctor, and Erica has known since then. But Erica hasn't told anybody. So now Vince has this mental breakdown. With Ren? I mean, I can't deny that I feel something. But is it just as a friend? Or is it something more? I can't keep my thoughts straight. Who is Ren to me? Ren is someone we need. Ren likes me. Especially for this category. Without any big societal expectations, that said, there's something about that way of seeing things. Maybe I want to live that way too, without being pressured by anybody. Well, I don't know yet. Honestly, it's hard to say just yet. But if I really want to be myself, I'm going to need... A future with written, which involves an ending. So now we're going to go into the spiral corridor. Uh, this stage is kind of like stage six, where there's a lot of different types of stages. But we also have to deal with. It, it hopes that you forget a lot of the mechanics of the game, which is why stage seven is so hard to a lot of new players. It hopes that you forget a lot of the mechanics by this point. Luckily, we have not. Edge. 
boing. It also kind of has the most obnoxious music in the game, especially once you heard it a couple of dozen times. But these stages are fairly short anyway, so it doesn't really get on your nerves that much, honestly. Grab that checkpoint. We're gonna run all the way over here. I'm gonna grab this undo just in case I need it. This is the last little section of this level. There, it's this one's probably the longest out of all of them. Easy. <laughs> so we're going to head on over here and buy a drink. Tonight's product is... So these are the questions that we actually had to pay attention to besides the four that we had to answer earlier. These determine whether or not we get a rent ending. One is different. And these questions kind of are like, oh, I want to be my own person and I'm not like everybody else and all that good stuff. Everyone's unique and positive messages for everybody. I believe we can miss one question. If we miss more than one question, we are actually locked out of the route, even up to this point. The trial stages continue on. We're going to use a drink here. We're then going to use the last two. One here. And one here. I'm gonna go this way today. You can go either way as long as you're symmetrical in what you do. But we're gonna go this way. We're gonna move the purple boy. Another drink? Guys, you can watch your language, please. There's nothing in life money can't buy. We gotta accept our differences. And all these questions are randomized, so uh, not the placements of the answers, but the placement of the answers are the same every time, so as long as you know the answer to the question, what side it's on, you can just look at the question and then tell whether it's right or left. But the question itself is randomized, and it has a pool of like, oh, I think it's like 20 or so questions, and I haven't memorized those yet, and it's not really worth memorizing, in my opinion. So what we're going to do here 
is that we are going to solve this one normally. Shocking, I know. Why are we solving something normally? We have three drinks. Oops, uh, that was an oopsie. Good thing we have an oops button. Uh, the first drink we're going to use is here. We're then going to go on this side, because it's much simpler to solve. this and we're gonna go around the back. This game also has a backside camera function but I get whiplash from it and I don't like that. So we're going to pull this block. We're going to get it over here so we can get to this white one. We're going to use the second charge of the drink here. I'm going to go get this, and we're going to bounce up. That is not the way they intended you to solve that, but it works anyway. So we have one drink left. Uh, there's a spot. And not this level, but in the boss level that it saves about 10 seconds on, which is really, really, really good. And this stage has a really weird... It, treat, it teaches you a really weird interaction with the new kind of blocks. Because normally you're not allowed to move a block whether if you're standing on a block that it is touching and it would move if you pulled it and you're not allowed to stand on them either but this stage tells you that you can stand on a block that is about one away and or you can stand on you can stand on a block within that block and it works somehow Makes no sense, that's not how uh, gravity works, by the way, but it works in this game. Don't know why. I didn't make it. I wouldn't have made it do it. So we're not using that there. We're going to use it at the very beginning of this stage to get to the shortcut. Shocking plot twist. So we answered all these questions correctly. Uh, the next question that we answer correctly should make the flower blue. And then we have to, we have to at a minimum, answer one more question after that. Can't escape. Actually, we, we kind of are escaping. So he does some things at the start that make it kind of obnoxious to solve if you're if you have no clue that those shortcuts exist. But since we do know those shortcuts exist, uh, what he does is absolutely irrelevant to us. He also does this, but the stage is the same every time, so there's not really any worry of dying. Unless you make a really stupid mistake. One, two, three, four, five. Then we have to go back down on it. We're gonna push this one out. Push that. Push this over. And then we're gonna pull that. Oh, my God. 
I'm gonna grab this because last time I didn't grab it, it kind of bit me in the rear end. This really weird snake pattern because of these two ice blocks at the end here. So once we start getting up here, it starts getting a little bit lighter so we can kind of see. That's why we had to push out because we do not have enough floor here. Now we can just go up with impunity. He turns on the lights for us, how kind. So that was Shadow of Vincent. It is basically all of our inner thoughts, and this is why he was taunting us with all that. So it's our girlfriend. She's uh, calling us to break up with us. Unfortunately. You got a mail. I need to skip. Alrighty, so now we are in the cathedral. And the boss is Catherine, the girl we've been cheating with. And also the boss is uh, Rin because the AI is kind of dumb. way so Ren has a nice way up. It doesn't take forever. You want to have Ren climb as little as possible but also walk as much as possible. Hurry up Ren, thank you. Uh, yeah, the boss can uh, strike you with lightning, and that's not cool. Uh, because that was a really awkward spot. Right, now we can have Rick come with us now. Much prefer if that lightning stayed the hell away from us. But it doesn't look like it's going to stay the hell away from us, which kind of sucks. So yeah, the the AI is not. That's upsetting. I haven't had that happen in a long time. So we're definitely going to be losing some time in this stage. That was really, really short notice on that lightning. That was really unfortunate. <laughs> Come on. 
come on, we're in, we can do it. We can do it and still not lose that much time. This game has a lot of lag as well. Not like Rin to get zapped again. That would be uh, the least, my least favorite thing that would happen. Ah, uh, she didn't move. Okay. She didn't have a way up, so she couldn't move. That's this is really, really bad. I apologize. This is a really, really bad section. I've never had two deaths in here before. Okay, I guess this time Catherine really is the boss and not Rin. I'm not supposed to pull that yet. I'm supposed to push this. Luckily, Rin moved out of the way of that. Last second, you could. He could, I'm sorry. This is a really, 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 really bad cathedral, I apologize. But, I mean, no reset. Can't really do anything about it. We've had bad luck with that moving that blue block, so we'll just ignore the blue block. Alright, and now we can fail. There we go, that's the end of the level. It's uh, four minutes late, but we made it to the end, finally. That was a really, really unfortunate two deaths. Especially at the very end, in almost the exact same place. With, the, with this time, we actually have a little bit of time left to spare, spare somewhere. But... Normally, a death shouldn't happen. <laughs> I haven't had a death in Cathedral in quite a long time. You're finally here! To think you made it through the Cathedral and reached heaven! You're looking for someone, right? Whatever could lie ahead. So now we're in the Imperio. Uh, it turns out that the bartender was actually the one that sent us into the nightmares, and not the girl we were cheating with. The stage introduces two different kinds of block, or one different kind of block, which are these red curtains. They are mystery blocks. Uh, they can turn into any block in the game, but unlike uh, Catherine Classic, these are actually on a cycle. This, these next two will be spikes, and this will be a monster block. Uh, 
Uh, they're on a cycle. We have it mapped out to, I believe, 50 blocks. But normally you won't ever really encounter 50 blocks on a stage. So we're just gonna come on and climb up here. Alright, and that's the first stage. The second stage, uh, I guess since we did see the second type of block, I can explain it now. But the second type of block is a monster block. Uh, they move whenever, some of them move whenever you do an action. Which an action is a push or a pull of a block. Oh, we already had that question before, but okay. Game is weird. We, uh... The, the monster blocks actually had a nerf in this game compared to... Well, I guess for us it's a buff, but... Mechanically speaking, they kind of had a nerf compared to Catherine Classic, because in Catherine Classic, they would move whenever the hell they wanted. Whenever the hell they... Wherever the hell they wanted, whenever the hell they wanted. But now it's... Just... On a cycle. And it's kind of, eh. I'm not that big of a fan of it, but it does make routing this game a hell of a lot easier. I can tell you that now. So we should get what I like to call the uh, bro block or the monster bro. Should be this one right here. He moves. Yes, he did. He is a bro. He moved right where I wanted him to. And this one moves down. Push him. Push this. And now we have a little stairwell up. Push this. Push that. He gets squished. Oh yeah, this red sheep. Uh, they get thrills of uh, kicking people off the towers. Uh, the bigger the sheep really is, the more sanity they've technically lost, lore-wise. So it starts out with just basic sheep, and then you get sheep with longer horns, then you may get a fat sheep, but I'm not sure if that's just uh, a fat person in real life, or if they just become a fat sheep. Then you get the gray sheep with a mallet, and now you get these red sheep with an axe. Nope. There. Now we are locked into a good or true Rin route. Almost. There is one more question that we have to answer on the first boss of this stage. This stage actually has two bosses. A little bit of a spoiler alert, but the stage has two bosses. So this gimmick is that they're split into two towers, and they're almost mere copies of each other. Except they're not quite mere copies. Up here they are, but not earlier on.
but we're actually going to... Um, this one. So we can get over here. There we go. This has fallen extremely weird. Now I'm not sure how I feel about this. But now we're back to normal. Just the way how these blocks work. So this will be spike, spike, spike. We kind of have to do that with him because he's kind of in our way and he's a bit of a butthead. We didn't need to answer that question correct, but we did it anyway. Just because we're good boys. Stage four, we get to go up this easily made staircase. It's very unusual to have a checkpoint there, but I don't know. We'll use it. We're not going to say no to a checkpoint. Apologize for the noise, my parents are kind of doing a little bit of remodeling upstairs. We have to wait for this piece to fall because that monster block would move, and if we pull it too early, then he moves in a weird way where everything doesn't light up. Pull this block so nothing else falls. I'm gonna go on over here. We're gonna use this in the gold block. This little section right here. Oh, that's dark block. Wasn't really expecting that. I guess the sheep down below stepped on one. Uh, this ending is a lot more deadly than it was in Catherine Classic. Uh, before it was just all of these blocks were these immobile blocks that we couldn't move. But now they decided to make it a lot deadlier. Don't know why. But these blocks are uh, black hole blocks. If you step on top of them, you get the bad suck. Had a death in that particular part of the level. Can you do anything for your love? Yes. The meter does not pop up here because it wants to keep suspense, so no matter what you answer, the meter would not have shown up. 
but yes is the correct answer to get into Rin's route. So now we are actually locked in to getting a good or true Rin ending. So this is the first boss, Thomas Mutton. Thomas Mutton has appeared. It's a killer. Do not die. So this is the uh, human incarnation of, or I guess, quote unquote, human incarnation of the boss. That is the first of his many abilities. He can change blocks into mystery blocks or monster blocks. And that's just about all he really does. You don't have any time. Oh, this is gonna be just in case he was actually shooting at me and I couldn't tell. So this is his second attack. He uh, shoots bullets. They're big bad ouchy bullets. And I don't like him for shooting me with big bad ouchy bullets. And I really prefer if he stopped shooting big bad ouchy bullets at me. I don't appreciate it. And that's his final attack. He uh, goes all stompy. He throws a f hissy fit. Can you blow this one up, please? I don't care about that one. Thank you. Blow that up. I don't care about that. Oh, that was really scary looking. But luckily, we're good at the game. Funnily enough, if he shoots a uh, bomb block, it doesn't blow up. It just kind of implodes on itself. So now we, now he's in full-on uh, tantrum mode. He does not want us to win, so he's just going to continue to do this until we win. I just want to make sure that I am nowhere near his feet. If you uh, just stand still when he's kicking, he uh, makes you fall down on your butt. So luckily, we got through that with no deaths. So now we have no other question to answer, so we're just going to go straight into boss part two. So now we're into the uh, not-so-human incarnation of this boss. He's a giant head. And luckily, there's some strings. Uh, one attack that we're not going to see because we're going to be outrunning him most of the way anyway, he has a beam that he shoots out of his little red eye there. Um, and that basically forces the bottom part of the stage to fall to where it's only got two or so blocks below us. But we're going to be out climbing him so we're not going to be seeing that. Off. 
So his next thing is that he's going to curse us. And now whenever we pull a block, all these special blocks are going to be turned on a cycle. Oops, he... Uh, we'll just go this way. Not the way I want to go, but it's fine. Let's suck it up to the same. So then we'll go run over here, push this, pull this. And now we'll pull this once, and we'll spring up. The most important part of the pattern is that once you see an ice block, it's going to turn into a monster block, and then the monster block turns into a spring. So that's the main part of the pattern that you're really going to worry about when you start running a category like this. Hold that, please. Thank you. So we're still pretty much on cycle here. We're actually going to grab this checkpoint just in case. So luckily they've uh, replaced these spiral blocks that were in the middle of this with monster blocks and it makes this part really easy. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Thank you. Thank you for ruining my day. It's just a spike. Okay, we're good. Whew, I thought that was going to be an ice block. Because I've seen ice blocks ruin my day. And now that these are springs, I'm just going to use it because might as well. And now we have an item just in case we need it. Which we honestly shouldn't. I'm going to wait for him to curse me because sometimes you get a little stutter whenever you get cursed, and that's not fun, especially on spike block. We're going to push that purple block away because it's kind of in our way. So his little attack that we undid on actually is supposed to shoot down meteors, but since we undid, uh, they don't show up at all really nice to know that we don't have to worry about those. Go this way. And now we're done with that. And this is where uh, classic endings would end, but since we're going for a Rin ending, it continues. So now, uh, the final plot, uh, another plot twist of Rin is that now, that angelic being was Rin's brother. So Rin is an angel. But unfortunately, there's one more plot twist and I really, 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 really don't like it. I really don't like it because it just seems like Studio Zero was kind of just laughing as they made it. It just doesn't seem right to me. But I'll get to that when we get there. So now instead of having a boss right now, uh, this particular level set is going to have the boss attack us throughout all the stages. Take that input there. These stages are kind of annoying. You might be thinking, well, why don't you just push one out like that? Uh, some of the solutions for these stages are thought out methodically because. Um, 
doing a push or pull wrong will break the latter part of the stage, and that is not fun to deal with. I'm actually going to wait for that. Thank you. Because I do not want to get zapped. I don't think anybody would want to get zapped. But when you're kind of this far behind, getting zapped really wouldn't matter, but I'd still like to live, honestly. Alright, the sage isn't broken because if it was broken, it would blow up that white block I just stepped on. And the animations for these are really, really wonky because you can go through the end of the animation, but you can't go through the start. Which makes no sense because then the hurt frames are not the way they're supposed to be. Question mark? I gotta wait for this now. Yay. Now Big Brother's pretty pissed because he's throwing lightning at us like almost every other step. But luckily for us, we're done. Come on, big bro, I'm not that bad. If it's like that bad. So now these questions determine whether we get a good Rin ending or the true Rin ending, which uh, the true one is eh, marginally worse than the uh, good ending, but either way, the twist resides in both of them. So now, he has a different attack. Uh, this particular attack involves wind, and if you are standing on one of the red blocks when he does the wind, you get this... You, Vincent spontaneously explodes. And again, just like the other attacks, uh, you can kind of deal with the end bit of it, but not the initial kaboom. And in order to brace for it like this, you hold on to a block so you don't get swept away. Because that somehow makes sense. Ooh, there we go. Get ourselves out of that situation. Clear that that way so I don't have to worry about it. Just gonna grab this and wait. And now we can move. So now we're going to grab this block here. Oh, it's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to do that first. So now he's throwing meteors down, just like what a mutton was supposed to be doing. But now we don't have to worry about much of anything. Oh, I need to stomp on you. There we go. 
stomped. Deaded. Uh, the meteors aren't that big a deal. Because you have a fairly large amount of time to see where they're going to land. You get out of the way. Oh, that sucks. Let's get out of here. Let's move this one so we can actually continue progressing up the tower. Okay, I can't move that block anymore. Okay, so we did, we would have lost the end goal. Alrighty now. So now we're going to be introduced to the last special block this game has to offer. This last special block is a laser block. It's on a timer and the higher you go up the tower the timer changes to like a double time timer. But it fires out the front, which means you cannot be in the front of it, obviously. It has a fairly long cool or wind-up time, so it's pretty obvious to tell when it's going to start. And stepping on top of these do nothing. Uh, when the trailers came out for this, we speculated that the top would be an on-off button. But we were absolutely dead wrong. I'm gonna wait here for the cycle to go through. Now I'll wait here for the cycle to go through. Wait here. And now we should be free to rise up to the top. I'll wait for a second so this laser can stop shooting. We're going to try to book it to the end of here, which we made it, and now we're going to head up, wait, unfortunately undos do not work for these blocks, I really wish they did, pull this block, pull this block, Ooh, that was really close. I would not like to repeat that. Now they should be on the double time timer. Yes, they are. So this is the final boss of the game. And just because it's the final boss, it has one more final bit of uh, abuse that we can do. Towards the end of the stage, um, well, we'll just see. We'll just see. I, I won't ruin the surprise. Boss. Archangel. It's the killer. Friend pulled the Baka card. How 
Good. So this boss has a multitude of attacks, which are just recreations of what he was using earlier. Uh, that's the lightning, but instead of being vertical, it's now horizontal. On the lasers, funnily enough, you can climb diagonally from them, and but as long as it's not right in front of you, you're fine. His second attack, he's about to use up here. Which would be clones, but we're not going to look at that because that is slow AF. Use that. And now we're gonna climb up here. We're on cycle. He should attack us once we're mostly climbed up here. Alright, good. Next bit of the cycle should be up here. And hopefully he'll start using lasers up here. Yep, he's going to be using lasers, so we are able to do this skip. So we are going to use the item here, and time. So this seems a little bit glitched out here. Uh, what's supposed to happen is he's not supposed to be attacking you at that point. Uh, you're supposed to be like, what the hell? Why is this stage not solvable? So at that point, the boss will slap that goal block away and the rest of the stage will fall. As you notice, we, we were only up about 70-60% of the way up the tower on the side, which is actually a map of how high you up on the tower. Uh, so instead of creating a dummy goal block on this particular stage, they just didn't do that. So if you step on that goal block, you win. <laughs> and it gives you this glitchy stage. Other than that, that is the run. Oh, yes! Get a load of this! <laughs> we made it! He has no choice but to Impossible! This cannot stand! It... 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 What the... And the uh, final twist of the game, as a giant middle finger from uh, Studio Zero to you, is that Rin is now an... Alien. Now my brothers will have to give us their blessing. Other than that, that was the run. Uh, the final cutscene is actually... The, the next cutscene is kind of funny, in my opinion, for one particular joke. But other than that, uh, I honestly think this ending is non-canon, and I do not like it. But I do love speedrunning this game, and I hope you enjoyed.